Productions. That was Rome, Caesars Atlantic City. Main events, Panics Promotions and Belt Boxing Promotions in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you present 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF. Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Boxing Commissioner, Larry Hazard Sr. And the International Boxing Federation President, Robert W. Lee, Supervisor at ringside, Marion Mohammed. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Al DeVito, Roy Francis, and George Hill. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Earl Morton. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing plaid and weighing in at 167 pounds. His professional record, 48 victories, 28 by knockout with five losses from London, England. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, Harold the Bummer Graham. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white, weighing 168 pounds. His professional record, 30 victories, 20 knockouts with five losses. He comes to us from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, presenting the reigning IBF super middleweight champion of the world, Charles the Hatchet Brewer. Referee Earl Morton. Harold Graham has heard these instructions, or very similar ones anyway, 53 times before in a career spanning 20 years. Now he comes to this Atlantic City Convention Center on the ballpark, hoping to beat the local favorite, Charles Brewer, from just down the road in Philadelphia. He was brought up in the North Philadelphia ghettos. He's making his second defense of the title, Brewer. A man who's come through a crisis in his career. We think he's a hard hitter. How will he cope with the slippery, maverick skills of Harold Graham? They say too that Brewer may be a little weak around the chin. He was knocked out in a round by Lonnie Beasley, who is certainly not noted as a puncher, but that was earlier on in his career. I wonder whether Graham just might try to exploit that early. Well, you would think that he's obviously, he's read the record, he knows that there is maybe question marks about Brewer's resistance to, to punches, so I think he's got to try and exploit that. We know he's got the, the silky skills, but you never know what it's like on all legs if this goes long, so I think really he's got to try and test the chin early. Brewer looking a lot bigger than Graham. Good left hand, catching Graham there. Certainly was a bit of a wake-up call for Harold. Although he's got him with a couple of decent left hands himself, Brewer does have the reputation of being a slow starter. It's happened to him a couple of times. And he does have a reputation of having trouble with south paws. But that was a good left hook. He did look as if he shook Graham up there. And now Brewer starting to try and put a bit of pressure on Graham. And Graham has... He's changed tactics now. Now he's on the back foot. Now he's using his legs and ring craft. Back to plan A for Graham. Can those 38-year-old legs keep him out of the way of Brewer for 12 rounds? It's demanding. Caught with a right hand there. Perils reflexes, not quite what they were in his peak years. And that's understandable too, but of course his whole defense is based on elusiveness and speed of reflexes. I think what makes it difficult in this fight, Ian, is Brewer is very tall and very rangy. You can also say he's got that extra strength. He's boxing super middleweight. Graham was a middleweight for a long, long time. So you can guarantee he's stronger. And I think the height and the reach will make it difficult for Graham. Looking for that same punch again, that wide slung left hook, but not connecting this time, Brewer. Nickname The Hatchet. 
good right hand from him is there as well in there on the far side from you. Graham will have to produce a master boxing performance, you feel, to win this. In all honesty, the signs are not too encouraging in the opening round. No, bro, looking strong and aggressive and really making Graham work in that opening round. He had to cover a lot of distance and you just suspect this is going to be hard unless Graham can find a punch just to keep him back. He's on $200,000, a career best for this uh, performance. Charles Brewer, Graham will be on a lot less than that. The exact figure has not been released. I would imagine about $50,000 at a guess. And there was that quick, sharp left hook that just had Graham moving backwards. There we see it. it was, Graham was moving away from him. He didn't get full force behind it, but it was enough just to shake Graham up. Lynn uh, Rhodes is the trainer for Harold Graham. He would be one of the oldest men in history at any weight ever to win a world championship for the first time. This Jersey Joe Walcott was 37 when he won the world heavyweight title for the first time. Archie Moore as well among those uh, leading contenders in that particular argument. Graham in the tartan trunks, the black of Charles Brewer. Good start to the round from Graham. But you're right about Brewer's ranginess and he's got some speed. It makes it easier for him to cut Graham off on the corners and pin him for those ropes. Well, there was a time when it was very difficult for anybody to get anywhere near Harold Graham. He was almost impossible to, to hit with shots. But the legs have slowed down, the reflexes have slowed. He's much older now. And I think it's a sort of fight where he'll begin to think and back it at top level. He's had four comeback wins. The last two of them impressive ones against Chris Johnson. That was a big upset. And then Vinny Pazienza, the former world champion. But Pazienza, slow and shot-worn, is a, not quite the same proposition as this ambitious Charles Brewer who may be in his peak time now. Nice work from Graham there. I think Graham needs to land something substantial to make Brewer think a bit. Just a slip there. Brewer seemed pretty tense and short with everybody at the weigh-in. He was conscious of the fact that Harold Graham had been in with great fighters like Mike McCallum and Julian Jackson. He said, yeah, but he lost to them, didn't he? It's true. Although it was a split decision against McCallum when Graham had his first world title attempt. But I think he's also going to be conscious that that was a, a very long time ago. Boxing better in this second round, though, Graham. He's a box of tricks still, isn't he? Yes, it's still, it's remarkable that he's managed to get here. It's a, it's a feat in itself that he's done that. Brewers found it hard to catch Graham in this round, and I think that uh, Harold is probably just outscoring him. I'd give that to Graham. What about you, Glenn? Yes, I think I would, an even round, or maybe just, just lean towards Graham. I probably would have given it even, and I'm not sure he quite did enough to control the round and get it on point. So I'd probably give that round a level round. one of the nicest men in boxing. Everybody in boxing these days seems to come from Sheffield. 
<laughs> well, it's, it's certainly a resurgence in popularity and there's so, so much going on in Sheffield so so many doing so well from there but there's a right hand from Brewer who did have some success in that round so for me just scoring at a level due to go 12 of course for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World and if Graham was to do it against the odds it would mean Britain had three of the four versions of the world titles at this weight Joe Calzaghe already a champion Richie Woodall's great win last night over Sugar Boy Malinga and well done to Richie for that positive start to this round from Graham You just wonder with Brewer, Glenn, what kind of demons might be at play in the back of his mind. There have been setbacks in his career, unexpected ones, things that have gone wrong. He lost twice to a, a complete southpaw journeyman earlier in his career. Left hand there, sneak left hand. Brewer goes down, and that will be a count. He was caught there by a clever punch from Harold Graham. And what about this? Maybe that chin is a bit dodgy of Brewer's. And Harold now might really start to believe that the impossible, or seemingly impossible, might happen for him. Well, to answer your question from before, Ian, this may give, bring back a few memories. A good left hook there from Graham. He's caught with one himself, just lost his balance more than anything. And another left hand! And Brewer's decked again! And this time he's more seriously hurt, unwisely. He got up with a count only at about two and says he's OK. But I think Graham's got his measure here at the moment. That was a beautiful straight left hand, and he really has. I'm not sure if Graham will believe this, but he's got to take advantage of this now. There is no three knockdown rule in operation, unfortunately for Graham. So another knockdown does not necessarily mean the end. He wishes it did. Oh, it's another one. He's rocked. Graham's getting him. I always thought Graham's punch power was underestimated, but he gets caught too by a left from Brewer. This is some round this, the third round not over clearly Brewer finds an answer just when Graham seemed on the verge the danger for Graham of course is that he gets careless and leaves himself open remember Julian Jackson look at Brewer come back here big nailing right hand and Graham looking open oh this is some round this is a terrific round going one way then the other at this moment Brewer looks as if he's the one with the advantage to give the American credit for coming back like this after being on the floor twice in the round grand court again by a right hand the left hook look a good one from Brewer there Brewer. Well, the defenses of both are open at this point it's just who catches one with the right punch it looks like a stoppage is imminent but which way there goes the bell to end a magnificent and dramatic third round up they're saying to Brewer in that quarter but well, what a terrific round there's the the first knockdown that one was just a, a little cup there was a few punches went in the first one was a, a right and then the, the left just sort of cuffed him around the, the side of the head the second knockdown almost seen Graham put over there but just a beautiful straight left hand the reflexes the timing were perfect there look at him just just slotted that one between the the arms and he went down heavily there and at that point I thought it was it was going to be Graham's fight but Brewer finished the round very strongly and that may be ominous for Graham it has to be the question of whether Graham has had his moment here in this fight or can he find another of those punches to deck Brewer again Well, this is absolutely fascinating, almost mesmerizing stuff here. There's some story involved in it all as well. Well, I think now we know that the chin 
of Charles Brewer is certainly suspect. It's just that Harold Graham has to try and find that chin. Good punches. Brewer talks to Graham in there. I think he was if, as if to say, no, I'm okay from those. But Graham's chances of winning this look better now than they did at the start of the fight. Well, Graham still looks comfortable, still concentrated. He's just giving some movement. I think he's just trying to lull Brewer onto that left hand. money, friends, his jewellery business, had a four-year medical ban. It seemed he'd never even come back to the ring, let alone have a world title fight, let alone maybe even win it. Again, he finds the gap. He's picking the punches quite superbly at times, Graham. He's always had the hand speed. Brewer caught with a great countering right-hand punch. Superb shot that was by Graham. Still getting a few himself, mind you, and of course with those low slung gloves of his and the punches that his opponents used to miss with some of them are finding the target these days. But both of them are still landing with good punches. Both of the defences are open. And that's always the danger in a fight like this. But this fight's still going one way then the other. That's the punch. Brewer just cannot get out of the way of that one. Graham just has to find it. Ah! Graham's round. Not much doubt about that, really. Unless you were wearing a blindfold. That was the one thing that Harold Graham did very well, and that was frustrate the life out of the opponent. It was only the, the very best could ever keep control and get past that. And Charles Brewer is having to think in there. This is hard for him. He's not quite knowing where the punches are coming from, and it's very good work from Graham. in the corner is confident that Graham now just has to stay cool he's at one two and he'll go he might be right Graham must be ahead with two knockdowns in one of the rounds and dominating that last one too here's round five we'd be surprised if this went the distance now but you never know the IDF super middleweight Championship of the world. And that's how I'm giving it with Graham ahead. And the third round, you may think, could have been a 10-8 round, but I give it a 10-9 round because Brewer finished the round very well. But still, Harold Graham is ahead on my card. are supposed to be strictly neutral of course but I'll have to be honest with you both Glenn and I have got a real soft spot for Harold Graham in there after everything that's happened to him and uh, you do find yourself rooting for him but I think you've got to he's we've said for many years he, he could well be the best fighter that's never won a world title and this is his chance to, to finally try and get that he's won almost everything else there is in boxing and I think it would be a wonderful story if he could clinch it but a long, long way to go before that happens. If it goes the full distance, of course.
Graham once famously described by Tony Simpson as a glorified limbo dancer in his style. Graham moving around with the hands held very low and I think at this age that's always the danger that he'll be caught with a, a wild punch. And there was too that uh, horrible story that came from the gym of Howard Eastman, the rising middleweight prospect who flattened Harold Graham and apparently had him out unconscious for several minutes and that was when several people were worried about Graham even contemplating a comeback but he's put all that behind him but we've just been mesmerized a little bit he's frustrated it just looks as if he's not quite sure what he's supposed to do in there this is what Graham is so good at confusing and bemusing his opponents Brewer looks like he's run out of ideas for the moment. Well, it's going well here for Harold Graham. Can he keep it up? Can he give his story a sentimental ending? Still to come, Lennox Lewis defends his world heavyweight title against Shannon Briggs. He has this to say. Well, I'm a natural competitor, so, you know, if somebody's in the ring trying to hit me, and I hate getting hit, I'll, I'll react, and, and in this case, I'll react in a good way. I'll just do what comes naturally and just uh, do all my boxing skills and, and, and box well. Fine, fine. But this Lennox Lewis is a big favorite to win. But, uh, well, he's warming up, ready for the fight. Everyone fancies him to victory, but, uh, well, Shannon Briggs, the New Yorker, does have 17 first-round wins on his record. And he says he's got nothing to lose and feels no fear. Looking relaxed as always, Mr. Serene Lewis. Back in the ring. Sixth round. Graham in the tartan trunks, the black of the defending champion from Philadelphia. Charles, the hatchet brewer, the man who still has the nine to five job in the computer business. But he needs a computer for a boxing brain to work out Graham. He does, and at this point, Graham with the center of the ring, just doing everything the way he likes to do, just flicking out that jab. Not a lot in it, but just bemusing Brewer and Brewer, not really knowing what's going to come next. Graham looking to try and just line that straight left hand right down the middle. Brewer still occasionally effective with that right hand, but more effective is the left of Graham, the south for left hand, which Brewer is an absolute sucker for, and has been all night. Graham boxing so well, looking as if he's in control again, picking up the left, but we remember the night against Julian Jackson when it was all going so well and then he ran into a thunderous punch and that ended his world title dream so he's still got to concentrate and keep those hands up absolutely jackson of course was a fighter who could have put anybody's lights out whether they were durable or not one of the biggest single punch hitters in the history of boxing but graham was embarrassing him that night up until that very point Just wonder too about Graham's legs. Remember in that Pazienza fight, which was a far less hard fight than this one for him, he did start to fade from about the 10th round. So stamina has to be a question mark at this advanced stage of his career. Yes, I think that's always got to be a, a problem for him at this age. But at this point, Brewer is not pushing forward. He's not making Graham work with the legs as much as he did in the early rounds. And Graham just keeping center of the ring, not having to do a great deal with his legs. So that looks good for him if he can stay there. Just move him around when he wants, but not get caught. Brewer's corner are getting worried. They're shouting out to him, please don't let him do this to you. Come on, hatchet. Break out. Howard 
the judges seeing it. Two from the United States and Britain's Roy Francis. I think I know how he's seeing it. Brewer tries to pose at Graham. Well, you just get the, the sense that Brewer, when he's doing the showboarding, is not entirely happy with his performance. Well, let's uh, see if we can get a view now back in London from Barry McGuigan. I think he's doing very well, Graham. I know he's doing very well, and Brewer's beginning to get frustrated. Each time he gets frustrated, he gets caught. Every time he can see it, every single time he frustrates him, he nails him with that southpaw left hand. And that's what we, we've got to hope for, that he can crack home a couple of those shots, because he just look unsteady when he's caught Brewer. But he's still very dangerous with that left hook. Harold's got to be careful, keep that guard up a little bit more, and be out of punch and range when, he's, when, he, when those punches are whizzing at him. Thanks a lot, Barry. Barry McGuigan, the former world featherweight champion. And this is Ian Dark with you at ringside in America with Glenn McCrory, the former IBF cruiserweight champion of the world. And what a night we have here with Lennox Lewis still to come and Harold Graham at the moment, and I stress at the moment, performing miracles as he bids to become a world champion at the age of 38. A man with a 20-year-old daughter who's an actress, would you believe? Well, this is a, it's a great performance for Graham. I said it was terrific that he's here, but really he's, he looks in control. He's rolling back the years. Good punches coming in from Graham. Brewer looking a little swollen underneath his right eye. Graham is unmarked and looking good at the moment. Can he keep this going? Maneuvering Brewer onto a left hook. He's very much looking to counter Graham, just trying to get Brewer to lead, make a mistake, show him the gap, and then the left straight left hand will be in. Brewer's comparative youth and strength may still get this job done for him, but it has to be said, for the most part here, he's been totally outthought and outfought by Graham. He hasn't got a clue what to do, has he, against the southpaw of this level of technical ability. No, he come out with a, a decent left hook there, but he's not closing down the gap on Graham as well as he should. He should be getting in quicker, letting the punches go. He's just taking too long to close the distance down. And worried, you can see that now, almost written on the face of Brewer. Graham has a psychological edge. Brewer pushing forward now, that was a good right hand. He's looking to try and dig heavy punches in, but he needs more than just one, and Graham fighting well back off the ropes. He, he caught him with a good left hand counter in there, and Brewer has to give ground and call up the assault. There were some good right hands, he's landing with some Solid looking punches in this round though, Brewer. He's come back quite well. Can Graham do 12 rounds at this level, at this stage? That's a key, key point, I think, from here on in. Well, this is much more of an effort in this round for Brewer. I think the corner have told him it's starting to slip away from you. You've got to assert yourself more. You've got to try and put more pressure on. And that's what he's trying to do here. Again, Graham punishes him with a countering left hook, but Brewer does get home with a couple of those right hands. I think Brewer won that one, didn't he, Glenn? Yes, he won that round at the corner, told him to get out there and start working more, search yourself more, try and overpower this man. And that's what he was he was trying to do. A much better effort. But you wouldn't have, you know, Brewer will be getting tired in there. I don't think he expected as tough a fight as this. As frustrating a night as this. And he really needs to, to bring something special in there. He's got to work very hard if he's going to pin him down. Brewer 
is worried. In his last defense, he struggled a bit over 12 rounds with Joey de Grand as he won this title against Gary Ballard, a South African who's not that great really, stopped him in five rounds. And just to reiterate, it's Graham's third world title attempt. Does look swollen underneath the eyes, Brewer, now. He does have high cheekbones anyway. Graham arrived in Atlantic City this week having trained in Miami alongside Lennox Lewis. He was very light at about 11 stone, 6, 7. They've had to build up his weight again. He's a pound inside the limit here, 11.13 now. And stronger probably for that. Well, the corner were pleased with Brewer's work. They wanted him to go forward and throw to the body, but now he stood off again and this sort of fight suits Graham. A little question too of how the American judges might be seeing these little pitter-patter southpaw jabs of Graham's, whether they're actually scoring them. question of course is, is the old chestnut of whether they take away Brewer's title if it goes to points with two American judges and he's down the road from his hometown that's another factor in the equation as it goes on here both of them are tiring I'll say one thing, in his heyday, Graham would have won this at a canter. Yes, I'm, I'm sure he would have, but it's, it's much harder for him now. The reflexes have slown. I tell you what, he'd have beaten this fellow out of sight ten years ago, out of sight. Yes, I believe he would. This is certainly no Mike McCallum Absolutely. that he's in with this night. Just moving not so fluently, possibly, now. The legs do look as if they're tiring to me of Graham's. Good left hand from him, though. It's worked for him all night long. Clubbing left hand from Brewer, showing spirit, and makes Graham give way with a right on the bell. What do you think in that last round? Half the score, wasn't it? That was like, it was more scrappy the last round. Not so many good punches landed. Graham had a little bit at the end. One of the men in the corner there, Bobby Watts. Bobby Boogaloo Watts is one of the few men to have beaten the great marvellous Marvin Hagler. Left hands from Graham just having Brewer in some trouble there, turning his back, frustrating him more and more. He just can't handle the south force stance, just gets frustrated, doesn't quite know what to throw back. This is the ninth round. Graham, who looks almost dwarfed by this tall, man from Philadelphia who looks as if he belongs in a completely different weight division. It's a kind of optical illusion. There is only a pound between them. And that's how I'm giving it with Graham. Still a two-point lead. Boxing well. Not as much coming back from Brewer, but obviously he's still dangerous. And maybe more dangerous. So as the rounds go on, you've got to expect that Graham is going to tire. He's going to feel the pace more. Graham must sustain his effort for all that Harrell has done at British Commonwealth and European level where he was champion at both light middle and middleweight 
His career has had a habit of blowing up in his face at key, crucial moments. And you hope and pray for his sake that that does not happen to him tonight. He's so near, so near you can almost smell it, that World Championship now for Graham as he thuds in that left hand again. He just can't work out the angle, can he, with the southpaw, Brewer? This is a good round for Graham. He's just moving well, picking him from long range. Not much coming back from Brewer. He's frustrated, doesn't know where the punches are coming from. There are times in there where Brewer looks as if he's staring into the eyes of a cobra that's kind of hypnotizing him. away from fulfilling his dream. Brewer tries to finish the round fast to impress the judges, trying to turn it on in the last minute. Two terrific punches from Brewer there, but Graham took them well. Brewer holding the ropes there. He's looking tired. He's trying to get a breather. He's a big guy. Do you think he's a bit tight at the weight, possibly, Brewer? That could, that could always be a problem, that he is tight at the weight. He's trying again to get to push forward to try and land punches at the end of the round. Well, Brewer didn't fight at all in the opening two minutes of this round. He started really with a minute to go. Will the judges remember that? Well, it was only about 30 seconds of action from Brewer and for the rest of the round. Good work from Harold Graham. Well, he might have fooled the judges, but he certainly wouldn't have fooled Glenn and I. That was Graham's round. Yes, it was. I would, I would have to give him that on my scorecard. So good at the beginning of the round, just keeping punches going. talking there at one time even he lost faith in Harold Graham he was going to uh, he was going to walk out on him I think I said Gary Atkin earlier on by mistake but um, it's Glyn Rhodes of course there was the, the two good punches in that round from Brewer but apart from that there wasn't that much you could score for him where Graham just kept working with the, the jab and bringing the left hand into play in the build-up to this fight, Graham annoyed Charles Brewer at the first press conference. He couldn't remember his name. He said, this IBF champion, um, what do they call him? <laughs> and uh, Brewer said, he'll know in the fight I'm going to leave calling cards all over him. Well, it hasn't happened yet. Nine minutes remaining. How are the judges scoring it? We do not know. I think that's always got to be the worry, the, the way the judges score this, because the jab is not that powerful. He keeps picking it up, but a beautiful combination there. They can't ignore punches like that. Yeah, but never mind this. I think he's fighting better here than he did against Pazienza. He's landed with combinations and significant left hands. Well, he's more forceful. He's pushing Brewer back on the back foot. Not a lot coming back from Brewer. I think these punches are taking an awful lot out of Brewer. this stage once again starting the round slowly and are we going to see him try to catch fire in the last minute it just seems as if the, the, the heart has gone out of Brewer he's not fighting back when when Graham slots those punches in Ooh. decent looking right hand though and another one for Brian and fight turns into a nightmare for Harold Graham and Charles Brewer 
give him credit really because he pulled that out of the bag ten years ago Graham would have beaten him out of sight no question about that but Brewer has kept his title and your heart goes out to Harold Graham because that surely has to be the end for him now you would, you would think so it was a remarkable fight for Graham and I think Brewer must have heard me say he's losing heart because as soon as I said it he come fighting back with a lot of venom a lot of hurtful punches and he was just starting to sink to the canvas when the referee jumped between them a sad night for Harold Bomber Graham who was boxing so very well up until that point now let's look at this again um, and let's assess the stoppage here from the referee Earl Morton really the, the finish came out of nowhere it did with Graham looking very good with Brewer looking as if everything was going out of him and then he just got the punches but there's not that many there's three four, four. that one was a hurtful Missed. one five five that's now, a big one that's a big one that's hurt him he's turning away he's unable to defend himself i was wondering whether he was a bit quick but i think at that point when you're unable to defend yourself is when the referee has to step in so i think the referee was right you just wonder whether if graham had had the benefit of being in centering and taking going down and taking an eight count whether his head would have cleared who knows but really it's no point to going on like that he has been being he holds on to the referee's legs there almost as if his instinct was telling him to sort of hold on but i think he was thought he was holding on to brewer and uh, you can't really question it what a nightmare that is for harold graham he is luckless isn't he he really is i think he was surprised at that point by the tenacity that Brewer came back with because normally he would have sidestepped out of the way they hear he didn't the official time one minute 34 seconds of round number 10 the winner by knockout victory and still IBF super middleweight champion of the world from Philadelphia chose the hatchet Brewer well Brewer's won it but he looks distressed Graham is relatively unmarked. It was just one bad little 10 seconds of a fight. He was dominating and winning. Little swollen underneath the right eye. And there surely can be no comeback from that after a career that began in the days when Jim Callahan was Prime Minister. Brewer holds onto the title this time, but he doesn't frankly look any great shakes. And I wouldn't think he'd be holding on to it that long to be honest with you what do you think Glenn no, I, not to take anything away from the performance of uh, Graham but Brewer didn't show, show himself to be a great fighter so it's all gone wrong I'm afraid for Harold Graham again here and still to come of course Lennox Lewis in his world heavyweight title defense against Shannon Briggs we were just beginning to believe in it we really thought maybe